That young lady there is Dawn Astle, daughter of Jeff. Fantastic picture of Jeff just over Wonderful. her right shoulder here. Wonderful. Having scored the winner in the 68 yes, FA Cup final against Everton. It was. Uh, Jeff, of course, Dawn. I, I, the reason I've not mentioned the, um, the diagnosis is because I can't pronounce what it was. But Jeff was initially, I think you were told, died with Alzheimer's. That wasn't the case, was it? No, it wasn't. Um, uh, when Dad was 54, or just before his 55th birthday, um, when things you could see were going horribly wrong, he was actually diagnosed following scans with uh, dementia, early onset Alzheimer's. And um, it wasn't until Dad's brain was re-examined uh, back in 2014 that uh, uh, it, it came apparent that, you know, Dad didn't have Alzheimer's and um, he became the first British footballer to have died of uh, the same disease as the NFL players, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Uh, now, we've, now we're reading, Dawn, that, that three of the 1966 heroes are diagnosed mm. with Alzheimer's, that Jack Charlton hasn't had the diagnosis mm. but might himself uh, be struggling with, with memory issues. I, 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 you likely to suggest that they might all be suffering in the same way as your dad was and that the diagnosis of Alzheimer's is just too easy. Yeah, I think, um, I don't think for one minute, Richard, you know, Dad, Dad can't be the only one. And you're right, uh, perhaps the diagnosis of Alzheimer's is too easy and, and is too convenient, um, mm. I guess. And, you know, for, for the families, uh, you know, it's so desperately sad. And for the families, um, I've shown, you know, a great deal of dignity and uh, a great deal of courage in, in coming forward. Um, and if you, I think if you look at the figures, if you were, if you were to take two um, of the uh, World Cup team so you've got 22 players um you know you you may think that there could be one perhaps you know who may develop dementia in later life uh, and obviously as we now know the figures you know that that's so so much higher because we've got at least eight don you you've had an ongoing battle almost it seems yourself with the fa what is the situation up till now To be, to be honest, Andy, I'm, I am bitterly, bitterly uh, disappointed, and, and I'll tell you for why. Um, when the story came out about, um, you know, very sadly about the, the 66 World Cup players, um, there was a quote uh, in the paper from a member of the FA stating um, that there was a series of, of questions that were to be sent to FIFA imminently, uh, regarding whether ex-professional footballers are, to, are at a, um, a higher risk of dementia than all other degenerative brain diseases than the general public. Um, and back in December 2014, the 3rd of December to be precise, um, my mum, Claire and I attended a uh, pre-arranged meeting with members of the FA and PFA at St George's Park. And during this meeting, we uh, uh, spoke about many things, um, the FA guidelines, uh, you know, the, on concussion, the grassroots concussion guidelines, the research on heading footballs, uh, and also looking at instances of uh, dementia in footballers. Um, and we were told then, you know, 16 months ago, that a series of questions um, uh, advised by the, the new expert panel would be sent to FIFA uh, regarding looking at instances of dementia in former players. Um, and I think, as, you, as I'm sure you'll understand, Mum, myself um, and Claire stated, you know, quite clearly that, that we weren't happy uh, with, with anything being sent to FIFA. You know, who, who could possibly trust an organisation that, that seemed to be embroiled in, in bribery and corruption um, to look at um, and possibly lead in, in a piece of research that could possibly be, you know, the most impe important piece of research uh, for, in, you know, in football's history. Um, however, um, as they are the ruling body, you know, the FA felt that it was right to approach them first. Um, and as I said, to, to read this in the paper um, s over 16 months on, I, I, just, I just find it indefensible and I find it inexcusable, you know, how long does it take to set up a series of questions? And, and more than that, guys, it's, <coughs> excuse me, the, the lack of, of respect, you know, um, towards 
those affected, to, to those having to watch their loved ones die, you know, stripped of, of dignity and, uh, and human nature. And for those in, in need of some sort of closure is, you know, is uh, beyond words, really. Dawn, thank you. Um, I, I, in conclusion, would have to say, I, I just, a little bit like the story we were just discussing with George Arbuthnot, you don't go looking for it, you're not going to find it. I, I, I think we've got the same situation here yeah. in many respects. They don't get it. They don't want to get it. But uh, if, if the film Concussion, Dawn, gives you perhaps the inspiration to keep going, yes. then it, it, it's very worthwhile watching, specifically from your family's point of view. Trust me, it's a great, great film and there's a, a huge amount of bravery that you, your mum and Claire have also displayed Absolutely. over this issue with, uh, with your dad. We will not leave it alone, Dawn. You know we're always here and thank Absolutely. you very much for talking to us again. Thank you, Dawn. Thank you.